Well, tonight, the man who set up the infamous Trump Tower meeting between members of Team Trump and Russians, he's speaking out. Before we talk to him, let me just refresh your memory, though, okay? On June 3rd, 2016, publicist Rob Goldstone, who represented singer and businessman Eamon Agalarov, emailed Donald Trump Jr., writing in part, the Crown Prosecutor of Russia met with his father, Aris, this morning, and in their meeting offered to provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. This is obviously very high level and sensitive information, but is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. And less than 20 minutes later, Donald Trump Jr. responds, writing in part, if it's what you say, I love it, especially later in the summer. Rob Goldstone joins me now. He's the author of Pop Stars, Pageants, and Presidents, How an Email Trumped My Life. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you, you joining us um, here. So you know that many people see this as this letter as an attempt, a collusion, right? And they thought it was evidence of collusion. Are they wrong? They are wrong. Wow. And, and people say to me, was I surprised by what we've learned so far from the Mueller report, i.e. no collusion? I, I always thought, if my email and the subsequent meeting at Trump Tower formed a cornerstone of that investigation and collusion, then this would be the finding they would have. Because I know why I wrote the email the way I did, and I know what went on in that meeting, because I happened to be there. You think it was a cornerstone or just not what, um, possible evidence of one attempt at collusion? Because remember, Mueller, Mueller's report never said they, did, they found no evidence of collusion. They said uh, the investigation uh, did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government. And that's, that means didn't meet the legal threshold. I think, you know, uh, there are people that are far smarter than me and on far higher pay grades than me that have spent two years investigating this. All I know is what I know, and it's what I've testified five times. I've spoken to the grand jury. I've been on Capitol Hill. I've spoken to the Mueller team. On an each occasion, I felt that the story needed context, and when people understood the context, the collusion side of it became less important. So let, let me ask you this before we go on, because we, what we do know, because of the, of the, this is one of the quotes from Robert Mueller in the summary letter, that Russians did interfere in the election. Do you feel or do you have some regret that you may have helped them in that? You know, I've been asked in the past, what, if anything, do I regret? I regret two things. One is that I sent the email. Let's be really clear. If I could wind the clock back, when I tried to discourage my client from having me do this, I should have fought maybe a bit harder. And I, I would read later that he told other people that he also had doubts about setting up this meeting. If he'd even had an inkling of that, if I'd had an inkling that he thought that, I would have fought back. The second thing I regret is naming Hillary Clinton, because it really had nothing to do with Hillary. If Joe Biden had been the candidate, if you had been the candidate, it would have been your name that I used. But you said, you said it was hyperbole, but still, you, did, you mentioned the candidate, and you said it was damaging, and there was Russian co connection. Can I, can I, I'm going to read something from uh, your Washington Post. You wrote an op-ed uh, in the Washington Post tonight explaining yourself, and in it you say that you would uh, have said anything to set up that meeting but why would you say that the Russians had dirt on Hillary Clinton in an effort to support Trump? Um, of all things, because, why would you choose that? Because I didn't make up the email. I made the scant details that my client had, gave, had given me better or worse, depending on which side you're on. I knew that okay, well, I... Okay, let me ask you, but let me ask you. Why did you think that that would appeal to anyone in Trump's orbit? Because as a publicist, I pitch people all the time. I have done for almost 30 years. If I pitched you on somebody for your show and said, they're okay, it's okay, it's kind of interesting, you wouldn't even read the email. If I puffed it up, you'd probably read it. And to me, the most important line that I wrote in that email was maybe to Don Jr., you should just speak with Emin about this directly. And when he responded, if it's what you say it is, I love it. I take that differently to people. I thought, thank God, it's if it's what you say it is, I love it. I thought, 
he's getting it that I have no idea what I'm really talking about. And then he goes, you're right, perhaps I just speak with Emin. As soon as that was said, I didn't care anymore. I thought, let those two people sort it out. All I've been asked to do is to create a meeting. I, I, I have to say, I don't, I don't think that makes much sense. It makes sense to me. I hype an email based on scant information that my client's given me, which, again, is public record. He'd said to me, it was an attorney who was well-connected. I pushed back a couple of times. What does well-connected mean? Well-connected. And I said flippantly, connected to what? The power grid? It's obvious to me who this attorney is connected to. So then if this attorney, as I'm then told, has potentially damaging information about illegal Russian funding to the Democrats and their candidates' campaign, well, the rest of it I puffed up. But I didn't make it up. I puffed those facts up. So you pu okay. So you're saying, Rob, that you were... Um, I was uh, a publicist. Yeah, okay, I get that. But I, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, that you were ignorant of the outcome and um, of the severity of what you were writing. But then you say, I knew enough about what I was writing that they would entertain it. And I knew exactly what I had to say because you said that they were doing, the Russian government was supporting the, pre who would think that? I would because I was in Russia with Donald Trump during Miss Universe. I saw how he charmed this r room of the sternest looking Russians I'd ever seen in my life. They were like something out of central casting. I'd been to Russia many times. I'd seen on TV what Putin had said about Trump, what Trump had said about Putin. And I'm entitled, I believe, to my own opinion in what was a private email from me, a private citizen, to Donald Trump Jr., who I'd met, I think, twice, who was a private citizen and whose father, against all odds, there was as much chance of Donald Duck becoming president as Donald Trump, in most people's opinion. Okay, so I have to say this. I'm not a publicist. But I would know if I sent to an official campaign, an official candidate, and, there's a, and I'm mentioning a foreign gov government, I would know enough, like, this could really get me in trouble because if this actually happens, this is something that people turn over to law enforcement. Two things. I did not know that. I did not even think that for one second. Am I saying that's good? No, right. I've never said that. But I didn't think that. And also, I didn't... I'm trying to say this without sounding derogatory. I never considered Don Jr. really a part of the campaign. You may have seen it. Again, it's in public testimony. I questioned whether I should send it to Mr. Trump via some method, whether it's his assistant. And then I decided to go way down on the food chain. And I chose Don Jr., because I'd met him a couple of times, to run it past him enough to put him in touch with my client. So I didn't consider that I was sending it to the official you campaign. You didn't think he had enough juice with his own father and to... to this is what I think. Since I think I was ignorant and oblivious, and I think if I had to guess, he was marginally more or marginally less ignorant and oblivious than I was. Mm -hmm. But there was a campaign chairman in that meeting. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to throw Paul Manafort under a bus because he threw himself under his own bus. But I do think that people say all the time, how could you, Rob Goldstone, publicist from England who works in the music industry, not know this was potentially a crime? The chairman of the campaign was in that meeting. And his shouldn't, son-in-law. Shouldn't one of them have said, if this is the case, you can't do this. And Rob Goldstone would have gone, oh, that's interesting, yeah. stop. Well, that's kind of my point. What do you think? Should they have said that? Well, knowing what I know now, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> but I so know it's... And, and I know you're like... And I, I know it sounds ludicrous, yeah. and that's why people on social media vilify me. Okay, I get that. And, and that's awful when people do that. Um, by the way, don't read social media. I mean, right. you know, it's the... I'll read it the minute I... Dark. Go off that. <laughs> okay, but listen, so that, the reason I, I said that, because shouldn't they know better? Um, they probably, they should have turned it, o turned it over to uh, law enforcement officials. And, because, and I think Barr thinks so, too. That's why, that's why people say maybe there, it didn't rise to the level of criminality, but it was an attempt at collusion. In Barr's letter, he said, multiple offers from Russian-affiliated individuals to assist the Trump campaign. Do you think that you did, what you did was right? And that, uh, if it's not even criminal, you think it was right to do? I think, having sat in on the meeting, that it was a classic case of a bait and switch. And 
when people say everyone told lies about it being about adoption and how could it be about adoption, what I've learned since that meeting and in the last two years, adoptions is a huge part of the Magnitsky Act. As you may know, it's the sanction that Russia put in place. Well, at the time, I'd never heard of Magnitsky or an act. So adoption to me sounded strange, but it's the only thing I took away from that meeting, the only thing I remembered. So if someone had said to me, what was that meeting about? I would have said adoption. It was weird, but it was about adoptions. 